Jason Reynolds is a New York Times bestselling author who has won multiple awards and written more than a dozen books for kids and teenagers, including the acclaimed Long Way Down. And now he's releasing his first picture book for children. It's called There Was a Party for Langston. It's published, we're proud to say, by Simon & Schuster, which is part of our parent company, Paramount Global. And Jason Reynolds joins us now. Jason, good morning. Good Yay. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, okay, so There Was a Party for Langston, which, by the way, it's beautifully drawn. It's beautifully told. It's a fantastic book. Speaking as a father of four, this is very readable. Uh, it, it's inspired by a picture you saw of some authors celebrating Langston in 1991. Who's in the picture and what was going on? So there's in the picture taken by Chester Higgins Jr. Uh, 1991, the Schomburg Library here in New York City uh, was dedicating a space in the library, in the lobby for Langston Hughes, dedicating it to Langston Hughes. Uh, and everyone comes to this party to celebrate and th this sort of memorial. And Maya Angelou, the, the great Maya Angelou is yeah. there. Amiri Baraka, the great Amiri Baraka, one of the leaders of the black arts movement is there. And they're dancing, but they're dancing on the ashes. So underneath the floor are the oh. ashes of Langston Hughes. Whoa. And so they're dancing to their hero, celebrating their hero, their idol mm. uh, in that space. Wow. And Sorry. you saw the dancing and you thought, what, what did that do for you? When, when I saw the dancing, what it, what it did for me is say, like, wow, my heroes were human. Yeah. Right, yeah. my heroes didn't just sit and write and ponder and 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 you know be moody and. So, so you like to see them doing something outside of writing. I like to see them having fun, uh -huh. living their lives, being joyous. You know, it meant the world to me. Also, that it's set in the library, I think, is interesting. Yeah. Are you trying to make a point about the library? Now, it's so funny, Jason, because I was in Brooklyn at the library looking at Jay Z's exhibit, which mm -hmm. I say, "Run, don't walk." To see this, it's it's amazing, but I hadn't been in a library in a gazillion years, and I thought. This is such a cool place. Absolutely. Is that part of the message you're trying to send here? Too? It is, it is. I'm, I want to use these historical figures and this historical moment as a vehicle to allow, allow kids to believe that the library is actually a romper room. A romper. The library is a place for adventure and mm -hmm. dancing and partying and joy and laughter and community, right? That it's all those things, uh, not just a place where you go to be quiet to study. Because yeah. they don't think a library is a cool place. But they should. They should. They should. They should. It's Why? A, it's a, Why? It's a place of growth. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. a place for, it's a place for freedom, uh -huh. right? What, what you're witnessing in that photograph is freedom, right? And imagine if we could let young people know that this is where you can get free, physically free, emotionally free, and mentally free. Yeah. You've created successful books in the past, mm -hmm. um, but you say this is the most incredible piece of work that you've done. I, you Why know so? I, this is, I've never been more proud. Hmm. One, because this is the most difficult book I've ever had to make. It's very hard to take a big, big thing and make it very, very small hmm. and still allow it to, to, to be nuanced and sophisticated for our young people. This is very difficult to hmm. do. The economy of language is very different in this particular space because you're only using a few words. And I have to be, I have to be, uh, I have to be clear that if it wasn't for the Pumphrey brothers who did the illustrations to help elevate it even more, yeah. um, I don't know if it would be the masterpiece that I believe it to be. But you don't call them writers, you call them word makers in the yes. book. And you say poetry is its own language. Why do you use the phrase word makers? I, I think that when we talk about making something, we're talking about the creation. Usually when we say it, we're talking about the creation of a tangible thing. To me, language is a tangible thing. It, it leads to the tangible nature of our lives, right? Mm -hmm. James Baldwin, the famous great James Baldwin says, uh, the interior life is the real life and the intangible dreams of a person can have a tangible effect on the world, mm -hmm. right? And so words, making words means that you can make a world. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want them to understand. And, and people making words helped you make worlds with your words, right? You started writing poetry at nine years old. How did Langston Hughes, or uh, how did Langston Hughes and you know Maya Angelou, these writers you're writing about here, how did they influence what you're doing with your life? I mean, and, and, and tremendously. Langston Hughes was the first the first poet that I read and the, and the language felt so eye level that it felt like it could be mine. And he was using the slang of his time, which meant that I could use the slang of mine. Maya Angelou, everybody loved Maya Angelou. Yeah. I met her, I saw her, I didn't meet her. I saw her in person and I could feel whatever that was that was on her pushing me back in the seat, yeah. right? Whatever that is, comes that energy, words, that right? aura, that energy, that aura. And Amiri Baraka, I was fortunate enough to um, be around him many, many times, and he's the one who, who, who gave me a sense of freedom. I could use sounds in my words. I could use onomatopoeia and be mm -hmm. loose like he was, and use it as if it were all like, like percussive, right? Yeah. Like poetry percussive. You know, he made me feel that way. This is the other thing about you, because like I could, like what you said, you like to see writers do something other than write. Yeah. Who would, looking at you, who would think that you crochet? But that's what you do, <laughs> no. you crochet. I, that's what I used to do. I mean, when I was, I mean, <laughs> when I was young, I learned to crochet. I always was trying to be fly. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't find the hats and the things that I wanted. Right. So my mom's friend taught me 
to crochet when I was a young person. And I did that all the way through school. And I always had on matching this, that, and the third. <laughs> and crochet. But, but it taught me, it taught me patience. Oh. And it taught me discipline. And it taught me to pay attention to detail. Because if you drop a stitch, you ruin the thing you're making. Much like when you're writing a story. Much like when you're managing relationships. All of it is the same. Hmm. So crochet, in a way, taught you about writing. Crochet definitely taught me about writing. What advice do you give to um, young people out there that, that want to tap into this field? You know, my, my biggest piece of advice is that one of the greatest ways to, to get into writing and, and learn to love it and, and be good at it is to learn yourself. This is an exercise of, 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 of self-awareness and, mm. and, and really, it's, it's internal work, yeah. right? And, and I am spending all of my life trying to better know Jason and every time I write a book, it is whatever version of that, um, you know, that I've dealt with is now coming out on the page. And hopefully the books get better and better as I continue to refine who I am as a person. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful line here. Once 16, once 5, once 3, once nobody, now me. It's a great book. I love when you come here, Jason. Jason Reynolds. Yes. Yeah. He's a great talker as well. Great yes, writer and always. great talker. Thank you very much for being here. <laughs> there was a party for Langston. It's on sale right now.